Hello, hello, yes. Hey, my name is Siam, nice to meet you. I was asked to talk about the future today. And of course I'm gonna start with the past. The past equals my parents. My parents who migrated 45 years ago from Morocco to Belgium, provides a better future like thousands of others are doing today. Yeah. And yeah, they came to here, so uh, to Belgium, by the way, I'm from Antwerp, not from Rotterdam. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so they came to provide us a better future. And you know, one thing was important for them, studying, working hard. So the day my parents arrived, they were told to learn how to speak the language. So they did, obviously. So when I told my father I was going to speak in English today, he was like, wait a minute. I left everything behind, learned how to speak Flemish, which is a very unlogical language for my parents. <laughs> And now you have to adapt again and speak in English. And you know he's right. I'm a minority among the minorities who, although today is part of the majority, has to adapt to a minority again. Got it? If you don't, it's okay, because it's irrelevant, okay? At least I'm trying to convince the people in the streets who are trying to touch my hair to see if it's a wig or not. It's not. Don't touch it. It hurts, okay? <laughs> or what about the ones who ask me why I don't wear a headscarf and if I ever would? Or this is the best one. The ones who ask me how it's like to be an independent woman within the Moroccan community. 2015, come on, give me a break and let me break it to you. I'm proud for who I am and of my roots. Proud to be a Belgian, Flemish, Antwerp, European, Moroccan, Muslim, but far most proud to be a woman in my hands-on mentality. I'm proud of our differences, but even more proud of what brings us together. And let's start with what's most important for us all. It all starts there, education. Although I successfully completed my teacher training, got my master's degree in educa educational science afterwards, I decided not to take part of our educational system for several reasons. Our system is facing globally serious issues. First of all, education shouldn't be about reproduction should be about personal development, about guiding our children into their dreams, passion, self-knowledge, into perspectives. Personal development from the moment they enter school as little boys and girls until they leave, as men and women who are self-aware, know their strengths, weaknesses, understand the world around them, have a positive image about themselves. But mostly, until they leave, as leaders, leaders of their own lives, take responsibility, able to make choices, leaders of their future, and perhaps even the world leaders of tomorrow, men and women who are creative, inventive, and discoverers. Excellence in education is when we do everything we can to make sure they become everything they can. Education is like integration. It's a lifelong process. And we can only succeed if we work together. Ladies and gentlemen, globally we are facing enormous challenges. Let's take the consequence of our demographical change the last decade. We have a wonderful diversity in cities like New York, London, Rotterdam, Antwerp, the most beautiful city of the world still with more than 170 different ethnics living together, but still diversity not being embraced, rather seen as a problem instead of a benefit. Diversity is not a problem, it's a solution for so many things. We have a school dropout rate of almost 30% in the bigger cities. So many young people losing keys to integration, participation, language, network, culture, a job, and more important, a positive self-esteem. Youth unemployment and child poverty that reaches a figure of one out of four. And two to five youngsters per week, in Belgium only, who leave to join a certain caliphate named ISIS. Of course, this makes me sad. I have a love-hate relation with Antwerp. 
because my love for entropy is so big, hate is just around the corner, like in every relationship. Rotterdam is quite comparable. A lot of these figures, I mean, also the beautiful Rotterdam has a staggering 65,000 people who live beneath the poverty line. And if I go back to my personal life, 29 years ago, I was labeled underprivileged due to my parents who didn't speak the language in the beginning, didn't finish high school, due to their financial situation. Still, today, I feel very privileged. It's even funny when I look back at my family's progression. I remember one day, I heard my sister screaming from her bedroom, so I went up, and I saw her drying her hair with an ironing machine. You know, back in the days, we didn't have any blow dryers. Today, we have 20. So, she got the nickname Iron Lady. <laughs> and obviously, Iron Lady, in my family, doesn't have the same... It's not the same as referring to Margaret Thatcher, of course. Yeah. But still, none of these challenges are the responsibility of one factor, more so, it's a collective responsibility, where the individual itself has its own responsibility as well. Again, referring to Thatcher, she believed in Tina. There is no alternative. I believe in Tia. There is always an alternative, because I'm a possibilist. I'm a critical optimist. I believe that our cities are breeding grounds of talent, of creativity, innovation and cultural diversity. And if we really want our essence to count, we must invest in our new generation. We do that with ambition, vision, by recognizing their talents, by valuing them instead of underestimating them, by giving them back perspectives. And perhaps it's easier said than done. But we try, and we actually do. We bring theory into practice. With our movement Let's Go Urban, where we rally around some thousand young people between 6 and 30 years old every week after school, and another 2,000 children in schools through passion. Passion for urban culture, dance, music, sports, acting, passion for entrepreneurship. Every week we program 45 workshops given by 50 coaches who make a difference between a technical coach and a personal coach. And for those who need it, we of course have our counselors, who guide them to their goals, whether it's financial independence, school-related well-being, no chance is too much. They all come to us because of their passion, and not because they have a problem. Passion is colorblind. It goes beyond your ethnical, cultural, religious or social economical background. Passion connects. It takes down all boundaries, and it makes all of us equal. I guess that's why we have a reflection of society at Let's Go Urban. Natives, more than 100 different ethnics, Jews, Muslims, Christians, atheists, a nice gender diversity. We reach out to a wide spectrum of society, and we welcome everybody. Don't get me wrong. We welcome everybody, but we are not a social relief organization. Not if the definition of social is nourishing them, making ourselves necessary, or not to be ambitious for every child. Therefore, we think we are more than social. Because for us, ambition is a new social. So initially, they come to dance or practice a sport, but if they don't have a school degree, of course, we will run with them to get their degree. If someone has personal problems, of course, we will run with them to give them back their strength and positive self-esteem. Three things count. Dreaming it, believing it, and achieving it. And so did the winner of So You Think You Can Dance Benelux, Malik. He started at Let's Go Urban, still is in Let's Go Urban, six years ago. We gave the right conditions, he worked hard, 
And today he can call himself the best dancer of the Benelux, inspiring thousands of others. If someone faints during training because they don't have enough money at the end of the month to buy themselves food, because no one was so ambitious to make themselves not necessary, then we will run with them to give them the tools necessary on the short term so they can feed themselves physically and mentally for the long term. That is what matters to us. You know, seven years ago I started me, myself, an idea, no money, no network. So today we are proud that we have a team next to us of 10 full-time people in a social profit and 50 freelance coaches. Once member, today partner. They're sending me their invoices now. Yeah. That's how we love to come full circle, and that's our philosophy. Because I don't have any dancers here with me or not one of our entrepreneurs here with me, I made a little compilation just so you can see what our youth is capable of to create with their talent. I would love to do that last move with you. <laughs> sure, I heard someone. <laughs> All right. You know, in the beginning they laughed at us. Well, today we have the last laugh. Really, I'm waking up every day with a smile on my face. I never, never could have dreamed of that I could be self-employed and stimulate others to become self-employed. You know. These young people, the whole team has an average age of 22 years old. Yeah. Young people who see perspectives. They see perspectives because they have a platform where they can develop their competency, skills, attitudes, and talent. With what's the use of guiding this new generation with good values, competencies, and skills if you don't have perspectives? Look at these beautiful men and women. They have everything they need to succeed in their professional career. I'm not talking about a dance career. I'm talking about a career in our companies, in different disciplines and fields. Although they have the right keys, doors keep closed. Isn't this what we should do as employers? Believing in people? creating the right conditions to grow, set goals, to find a match between the values of these people and of our companies? No. We are all bound by that one thing that is the most valuable and untouchable fact. Time. Time has no beginning nor an end. 
But time gave us a beginning and an end. And in between those two, I believe that it's our duty to do whatever we can to make sure closed doors will open for these new generations. After seven years of experience, I can say we can prepare a new generation for their future, but that the future isn't ready for them. On one hand, we have a new generation with potential and talent that doesn't find the right job. On the other hand, we have companies and employers telling us they can't find the right people for them. Obviously, we have a major mismatch. A mismatch between companies today and the people of tomorrow. A mismatch between open vacancies and so many people unemployed. In Belgium, 49% of the migrants don't have a job. That's an enormous social economical challenge. The resources go to social relief organizations and governmental institutions. Well, the social impact on return isn't enough. And that's why we as social entrepreneurs, change makers, Generation T, Generation Transition, want to invest in a new platform. Not Tesla. <laughs> Point urbain. The Silicon Valley of social entrepreneurship, with an overwhelming vibe to take action, reaching out to different communities, to young, creative, low, high qualified. In other words, reaching out to a wide spectrum of society. Point Urbain wants to create social innovative answers on the biggest social economical challenges, create jobs, be an extra place for training, to find that match between those companies of today and the people of tomorrow. How we want to do this? It would be my pleasure to discuss this further with a cup of coffee. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad that we arrived at the turning point. My generation is standing up and saying that it has to change. Change in a way next generation don't have to face the same obstructions again. And it's my mission to convince all entrepreneurs to become social entrepreneurs. It's very hard. And we compare it with Tesla. We are the Tesla of social entrepreneurship. Disruptive, creative, innovating, sustainable, and the time is now. Just to round it up, I wrote a book, Hashtag Belief, about this generation transition. But more important, the hashtag is to connect with each other, to connect with the world. So may I kindly ask you to tweet your hashtag belief, of course, tag TEDx call signal, into the world, tag myself if you want. If you don't, it's not to boost my ego, but it, just if you don't, then you will end up on the page of Justin Bieber. Okay? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to round it up. It was an honor to come to the beautiful Rotterdam, to speech here, and I just want to wish you a lot of hashtag belief, and thank you so much for your attention. Thank you.